it's many, it's many things at all. It's, it's a matter of concern for the environment and concern and helping other people get more out of the resource we're using. Mm -hmm. So it's a combination of those things. But I think it, uh, the fact that people define it differently is, is probably reality. It's, di it's lots of different things. It's not mm -hmm. one simple object, one sim sim simple item. It means taking actions and doing plans that develop, in my case, the university and what it does in a way that makes sense now, that delivers value and quality now, but doesn't compromise the future. Then you're building for the medium term, long term, mm -hmm. as we're looking at the short term issues. Well, quite a number of activities at the university would actually come under a sustainable development um, umbrella. Mm -hmm. uh, and this would range from educating the leaders or the local leaders of the future, uh, very much in this region and sub regional level through to the scientific and enterprise activity that we're doing that fulfills a uh, regeneration activity. Mm -hmm. Coupled with the development of the sub-regional economy mm -hmm. by the creation of spin-out companies, start-out companies, in a manner that would um, develop a knowledge economy in that regional level. Right now, we've moved the, uh, the activity of our environmental group into recycling virtually everything that the university consumes. For example, we recycle nearly 60% of our uh, waste stream, which is quite a significant achievement. It's become a very, very successful and committed unit. And because we've got academics involved in that, and because we've created a discourse within the university, Despite the fact that we don't teach sustainable development as a core subject, because we don't have a host department that is convenient to do that, mm -hmm. despite that, my academic colleagues who work with me in this area have now generated, or are generating, um, an open unit on sustainable development. Um, and that has all been uh, achievable because we created the sustainability discourse right across the university involving academic colleagues. Uh, it's taken a long time. We've been at it since the 1990s. But it's quite amazing that even though I'm not responsible for curriculum, mm -hmm. that we've managed to get the discourse to move into the curriculum area. We're on a green campus in the middle of the city, so we're probably the biggest green space in the city, in the city of Birmingham, which is, which is fascinating to be on a campus in that state. And we, we have to preserve that green. And we recently, I recently built on a little bit. And so a, an L-shaped building had trees and, and, and grass and plants around it. And, and we sort of, we met, we've dispolled it in terms of build, closing the quad, which is a nice shape and a logical building. But we actually did not put trees down. Mm -hmm. And we're quite sensitive about this, about having this, and quite a few people and students were upset about it. Mm -hmm. um, but of course it does come in the concept of sustainability, because you think, well, we just destroyed something. But out of, out of thinking about it, I think we've actually created more than we could have done. I mean, two things happened. One, the original quad, which if you look at quads in universities, it's usually pretty dead things. It's mm -hmm. just grass and, and, and paths. If you look at quads in the monasteries, they actually grew herbs in them. Mm -hmm. for plants and this was the, this was the trick mm -hmm. so this quad is not going to be grass it was it was originally it was hard concrete so the answer was let's make it softer so the one thing was going soft and natural and it actually first of all it halved the cost of the quad so that's sustainability in terms of it reduced the cost mm -hmm. of the construction and it drains naturally because it's got earth grass mm -hmm. and some other sort of fillings in there but the second is how can we use it to make it rather than making it soft and environmentally nice how can we use it two things one we have a restaurant so there's a herb garden <laughs> that, that's straight, so you're going straight from being plants. That. The second is to, because we disturb the wildlife, it's actually making this quad wildlife friendly. And so one of the things we've taken is bird life. Because you've got an interesting microclimate in a, in a quad. And so the aim is to, is to only plant plants there which have a role in terms of the wildlife, so we can bring them in and also put shelter in there and other things so we can encourage them directly. Mm -hmm. But being a business school, the conference centre, we have 50,000 guests a year pass through the conference centre. So we can educate people while they're doing it. So that we could say this is how it works in practice and this mm -hmm. is what a sustainable building might look like. Mm -hmm. Examples of that include our library, the Bamford Library, uh, which has incorporated in it natural ventilation systems, rainwater harvesting, lighting which responds to ambient lighting outside the building, uh, and a great degree of use of wood in the, in, the, in the construction techniques, which means that it's coming from a more sustainable source. And that, we felt, was quite an important signature building for beginning other projects on site that had a sustainable background to them. 
I think the one that excites other people is our success in our green transport policy. Uh, the city of York doesn't like the car, and I have to say, um, I, I'm totally convinced of the danger that the car can um, inflict on the environment. So we have a transport policy which has enabled us to reduce our car parking spaces by 73% to encourage people to cycle and to walk. And we've done that by introducing car parking charges, which is never popular, but it's enabled us to invest in showers, cycle racks of every description, health checks for cycles, people bring them onto campus and get them looked at, and also what we've done is given an allowance for people who use bikes for work. I've given up my own parking space, I don't win enough points, I walk to work, um, my deputy cycles, and generally we're trying to create um, a community feel for doing things in a responsible way. And it works. We, we feel that we're now part of a responsible um, transport plan for the whole city. Ability. If I give an example, again drawn from the University of Leicester, I would say if you look at the student organisation called CONTACT, which is a group that does voluntary work in the locality, where last year we had 400 students working with different groups in the community, uh, helping children learn to read in primary schools, um, developing adventure playgrounds in deprived areas of the city, actually taking children in certain areas on holidays when they wouldn't get otherwise get a holiday. If you take those areas of work which are building and developing relationships with the community, that actually is sustainability. But I think people don't, first of all, think sustainability. They think about the work they're actually doing.